Good morning, good morning, everybody. Just resetting all this up. Just make sure it's all up and running. Turn it sideways so I can see chats. Right there. Perfect. Just give it a couple minutes for some more people to come in. Wait for Flip to, lo to end his live. I know Flip is going to do his live right now, so he's basically talking about the same thing I'm talking about. So today we're going to cover setting up a shrimp tank. He's setting up the same thing I'm talking about. Oh, let me mute this. So today we're going to cover setting up a shrimp tank. There we go. Had to mute that. Um, so we're setting up a shrimp tank today. We're going to set up a Caradina tank, and we're going to set up a Neo Caradina tank. So we're not actually setting up the tank. I'm going to talk you through it. But I also want to talk about uh, the American Shrimp Contest that is coming up uh, down in Dallas, Texas at Aquashella. Um, I'll be going down to Dallas, Texas for uh, Aquashella. It's going to be October 30th and 31st. Um, for any stores, there's going to be a pre- um, show at uh, on Thursday, which I'll give more details. I'll be setting up for uh, displaying uh, Shrimp King products and JBJ products out there as well. Um, but this is like the perfect opportunity for you to enter a shrimp contest. Now, I know a lot of people went over and said, you know, hey, um, I don't want to enter and be embarrassed or I don't want to enter because these bigger known people enter the contest and they win. Well, Eric Lucas and Grant Eater of the Garden of Eder um, are going to be judging with me, so they're not going to be entering. So this is like the perfect opportunity to display your shrimp and to get feedback from us as judges that are known in the hobby to go over and let you know how your shrimp rank and everything. Um, it's a great opportunity. I actually have a local kid who is 11 years old that is flying out there to enter his shrimp contest. Um, I think it's going to be a great thing. Um, if you need more details, please let me know. I can tell you how to ship. I can tell you all this um, the website is aquashella.com. You can go down to contest, uh, contest. It's going to be shrimp. So they're going to be, we changed it up just a little bit. So what we did is we did the Neo Caradinas category one. And then we did, um, I do believe crystal reds is category two. Um, tiger variants is, is number three. Um, now we're trying not to do any of the wild shrimp out there. Like tangerine tigers is not really uh, a shrimp that you can breed. And then you can call out, um, Category four is Taiwan bees. Category five is the hybrid. So we're actually doing a new one. It's category six is Taiwan bees with orange variant eyes. So it's all the different variants of eyes that you can bust. We do like orange eye, yellow King Kong, um, silver eye, uh, uh, blue bolts. It's 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 a it's a new category that we're gonna try out. So um, please please if you have any questions please let you know ask uh, Grant ask Eric Lucas ask Flip Aquatics ask myself on this. Uh, we're making sure that you make sure you have your shrimp turned in by the deadline on there. If you do not get enter, if you do not have your shrimp in it by the deadline, we cannot compete on those. Um, it's very time sensitive, and it's more um, uh, fair for everybody as long as everybody has their shrimp in at the same time. So I'm gonna say, go through the chat and see who's all here. So we got Mystery Snail Guardians. Good morning. Good morning. Rocco's there. Hey, Rocco. Talk to him on my way in. My fish tank aquatics is here. Uh, Monster Fish Gale, hello, hello. JL is not here. He's actually here in person. Uh, Jimmy P's here. Hello, hello, hello. Let's see who else is here. My fish tank aquatics already said that. Jimmy P's. I be Sam. Hello. Uh, Facebook user mains. Hey Jess, how you doing? So we have. I'm also uh, streaming this on Facebook. So of course. And just as Facebook user, I think you have to uh, register with uh, the StreamYard to go over and see your name. But, hey, welcome, everybody. Um, just trying to get good morning, good morning, good morning. All right. So let's – hey, Chevy Fish, how you doing? I also guys want to talk to you about um, the aquarium, uh, the Aquatic Morning Show. It's Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. It's a great show. I watch them in the mornings on my way here. So – Please uh, join them. Um, one of my moderators will throw the link down below, and that's super cool. Um, all right, let's get back to setting up shrimp tanks. So there's two different types of shrimp tanks that you can actually set up. You can set up a Caradina shrimp tank, and you can set up a Neo shrimp tank. Now, everybody says that Neos are more hardy. What I think a lot of people did is they considered shrimp or Neos more hardy because you can use tap water for them. Anything that you can use tap water, they consider more hardy. Um, I think for having shrimp if you have 
ROGI water available. I think Caradinas are simpler because you don't have to worry about the cage and the water because you're only dosing GH. But I can get into that in a little more. Um, so the basic things that you're going to end up probably needing for setting up a, you know, a shrimp tank is you're going to need, see if I got this on the side here, is a TDS meter. TDS meter is great, or what you can do is you can use a GHKH test kit. It does the same thing. I think the TDS meter, if you have multiple tanks, is so much easier. Um, it's a matter of just plugging in as long as you don't dose fertilizers and you use RO water, you're going to basically know where you're sitting. Uh, the ideal water parameters for uh, neocaridinus for the TDS is at 220 to 300. That's what I keep mine at. Um, so we're going to go through uh, the neocaridinus first. Um, and then it's a GH of 6 to 8, a KH of 4 to 6. Um, you should always cycle your tank with healthy bacteria, which I have that right there. So let's start from the ground up first. So for neocaridinas, you can use inert sand. So you have stuff like just normal inert sand, which I'll lay it right there. Just black, you can use pool sand. It works completely fine. I do recommend to people that they go ahead and rinse this off first because when you put it in your tank and you add water, a lot of the granules will actually float. So we got the sand. We also have Eco Complete, which my green screen is still on. I have not shut that off. That's still kind of funny. So I'll have to do that before my next stream. So Eco Complete is right here. It's a great product out there. It's inert. It's crushed. It's uh, crushed lava. Now I know a lot of people go over and say, "Look, you should go ahead and use this because it's got nutrients in there for plants and it's got bacteria." It has some, but not a lot. I mean, if you're going to go over and you expect this to grow tons of planted tanks, it's not going to do it. You have to use fertilizer. You have to use root tabs on there. So, and then what you're going to end up needing from that. You would either add tap water. Now, if you add tap water, please know your water quality in there. Add Prime. Uh, Prime is great. It takes out a lot of the chlorine out of there. I personally use straight RODI water. Um, where I live, uh, and where I have my shrimp shack, it's in Plymouth, Minnesota. They dose chloramine in the water. So what chloramine does is chloramine will actually bind with ammonia and start bypassing a lot of your filters and actually go in your tanks. You're actually dosing straight ammonia in your tank. Um, and yes, you can test for it. It's harder to get out. But I know on the RODI systems, they can actually make a chloramine filter. It's like $2 more. I tell people just buy that extra filter. Um, it only costs $2 more and take that chloramine out. Now, a lot of people will be like, well, I can go over and I can just go to my my uh, my local city. The, you know, They're supposed to put what they put in the water and stuff. Um, we try to contact the local... Um, water municipality and what they said is after we caught them in a lie is they said as long as they don't dose the product 365 days of the year they don't have to put it on their website because it was all four years old um so now i just tell people when i sell them ro system to just buy the filters three dollars more to just, just take care of it now if you use ro water um so let's go back to i'm sorry let's go back to tap water if you use tap water and you use the uh, primed dechlorinate it. Please know that if you use a TDS meter and you test it and you're up in the 800s, 900s for your TDS, you're going to have a high pH. Uh, we covered this in a previous uh, uh, live last week. We talked about uh, fertilization for the water and we also talked about what makes up the water parameters. So if you have a high pH, you're going to have a high pH in your tank. Shrimp usually like it in, like neocaridinas like it in the mid sevens. Um, can they be up in the eight? They, they can be up in the eight, but they're not going to thrive as much. So I do recommend if you do have high TDS or a high GHKH and a high pH, uh, water it down, break it down with some RO or distilled water. So you can do like a half and half. Um, but today I'm going to spend more time on the RODI system and using RO water because I love that stuff and most breeders are using that. So <clears throat> there's a few products. I'm going to grab some of them, get them at all ready and stuff. Um, there's a few products if you're going to use RODI water. And I don't carry every single product out there, but I'm just going to kind of go over some of the stuff I use. If you're going to use RODI water, there is some remineralizers. So if you're going to remineralize for... I use it down here for neocaridinas. There's a product that Shrimp King makes. It's called the GHKH. It works great. It's in a powder form. Um, I tell people it's it's a great product out there. If you got a, a bunch of bigger tanks and stuff, this works great because the powder does last more than than water. Um, 
I always tell people, you know, everybody's like, well, the instructions are on there. Yes, the instructions are on there, but please base it off the numbers from a test kit versus what it says on the box. It's so much easier that you actually test your water versus following the, the, the direction on there. That's what I do, and that's what other, a lot of other people do. So that's by Shrimp King right there. And then we have a product by SL Aqua. we got two products that you need for their product. If I get this on here and kind of stay in there. There. They used to make a product called Red Wizard. So Red Wizard was a great product. They had the Caridina version, which was called the Blue Wizard. Um, but they made a Red Wizard version. Um, the person that was bringing it in said that uh, SL Aqua actually discontinued it. They actually did not discontinue it. It just made more common sense for that person selling that instead of selling one bottle bottle of product, they actually have to now buy sell two bottles to make up what was in the one bottle. Um, it was then said that um, the Red Wizard did not have KH in it, but on the video that they tested for, it was actually only a half a gallon of water, but if you actually used the proper amount, like an average tank is like a five gallon, and 10 gallon, it actually had the right KH in there. Um, I like the product, I love the product. Everybody loved the Blue Wizard and Red Wizard. Um, after the person lost his contract, they gave it to um, Ultimate, Ultimate Nature Systems to bring in, and then they brought in the less known product called More. Um, More is a product that was the same version of the SL Aqua uh, GH and the GH KH. Um, my thoughts and opinion is if a company like SL Aqua has five different lines, I don't think they're actually spending all that money for different product research and coming out with different products. I think they just went over and had the same product. They just put it in different bottles to hit different spectrums. Um, so that's the product that is currently in here from SL Aqua. It's called More, which is kind of concentrated. And then there is a product that I personally use here. Here it is. It's by Brightwell. It's called Brightwell GHKH. It's called Neo Tiger KH and GH. Now it is more watered down. Um, it's more forgiving for the beginner person on there. Now on this one, the, the bottle itself, the lid, I tell people put their thumb over it, shake it up really well. The, uh, the, the squirt top is not the best squirt top on there, but it is what it is. Um, but when you put it in your water, it should look like milk going in your water. And it's a matter of you, you any remineralizer, you put it in there, wait a couple minutes, it's going to dissolve in there, and then you can check it with your TDS or your GHKH test kit. Um, I use this for all my small tanks. All these tanks that are in back of me right here, I use the liquid version. It's it's so much easier for me. I can just put my TDS meter in there like so, and then just do a pump, pump, kind of mix it around with my net, check my TDS meter, and I get my, my reading. Um, it's a great product out there, so that's what I end up using. Now... We talked about the the remineralizer. Now it's all about you know the the bacteria because when you set up a tank, you have to put bacteria in the tank. So there's a few versions of bacteria which I'm just grabbing it right now that I like that I have used. So the you have like a Bacter AE, which is a great product. Um, if you do use too much Bacter AE. Um, it will raise your TDS in the middle, or t your TDS number. So TDS is total dissolved solids. Um, so I usually use Bacter E is after I do a water change, I put a little dash in there. That's what I use. Now, Brightwell uses a product called the Florian Bacter. It's a good product out there. It's a liquid version. It's a smaller 125 is what I carry in there. Um, I also know, let me grab this, Essel Aqua find my bottle gotta grab this one Dennerly which is shrimp king also came out with a bottle called Bacto it's a Bacto elixir so this is a bacteria liquid bacteria in there um, I've been product testing this right now so it's been going quite well um, I just want to get some more product testing done and I'll start carrying it on my website for all the shrimp king lovers out there it's a great product and the product I'm currently using, which I've been, I got introduced to about four years ago, and it's what I use. And people come into my store and they say, "Hey, Joe, why are these batteries in your tank? What are those vials?" That's why I just tell them. I said, "It's the bacteria I use to cycle my tank. You don't have to put these vials in there, but I keep them in there because then people ask about it, and then I could sell them it." So the product is called Protobio Startup. 
So you have the startup and you have the back backdoor kit. So what's good about this stuff is each file is, is ranked for, I do believe, a 10-gallon tank. So this will treat a 10-gallon tank right here, and this one has six different files. So it's in theory, it's 30 gallons. Um, it's a two-step process. So first what we end up having is we have the backdoor kit. So what you end up doing is you end up putting your soil in there. You fill it with like a, like a half inch of water, so it's above, and then you open up these vials. There should be two vials in here, and it'll say specifically on there's soil. So you open these two vials, and you dump it in there. The vials, just glass vials, where you open up, you break one off, break off the other one, kind of like this. I'll show you right here. And then you wait a half hour, let the bacteria get around in the soil. Then you fill up your tank, um, and then what I do is I end up putting my – my right amount of GH and KH in the tank, and then I open up the second files, which is this right here, short on the camera, the startup. And then I dump them in there. Now, they advertise that if you do this, you can put livestock in there within six hours. So what they do is there's one called BioDigest Start, and the other one's called Ammonia Start. So what it does is the Ammonia Start binds with the ammonia that's in the tank, and then allows your livestock to be in there. Now, it doesn't take the ammonia out. What it does is it allows you to do a water change and take that out in, in time. Um, I like using this because I have gone over and been known to over-order shrimp, and then I have to set up an emergency tank because I need a spot for them. But what I do is I use a seeded filter, put the seeded filter in there, set up the whole entire tank, put this in there, and then within five hours, I put shrimp in there, and I've had success rate. I've had baby survival. I've had all that. So I love this product out there. Um, sorry about the green screen. I love this product out there. I do have it on my website. It's a great product out there. Um, so now we got the bacteria. Now let's talk about putting stuff in your neocaridina tank. So there is actually, let's do it with rocks. We talked about this before. So there's a bunch of different types of rocks. We have Ocostone, which is also called Dragon Rock. It is a clay based. I did have a customer come in and said, hey, but there's two different versions. There's a black and a red version. It's still all clay based. It's an inert rock. Okay. Then we have slate, which is inert. And then we have lava rock, which is inert as well. Then you start getting into the more prettier rock, which is like this. This is Ciru Stone. It's a great product for aquascaping. I like it. I'll show it on camera right here. But the problem you have is you see all this white? That's calcium. We talked about this. This is going to raise your cage in the water, which is going to make your water harder. So this is one that if you're going to use for neos, do accordingly. You have to know what goes in your tank. So if you put this in your tank and you're using tap water, you are going to have super hard water. So what I would do... Um, if you're going to do that, I would actually only dose for GH in the tank and then use this to raise your KH in the tank. Um, some people use cuttlefish bone. I've never been a fan of using products from other animal or for other purposes into the tank. Crushed coral. Crushed coral is made for saltwater aquariums. Some people use it for cichlids because cichlids like, <clears throat> excuse me, cichlids like harder water. Don't use it in your shrimp tank. Don't. If you need to raise your, your just your KH in your tank, use the product like like I said. Use the KH conditioner. It, it raises the KH. Use the product what you're supposed to do. Um, and then cuttlefish bone. I mean, you're, you're, if you're putting straight calcium, like a big block of calcium in there, it's going to constantly leach out that calcium. Don't use it. Just use what you're supposed to use. Um, I tell people uh, stick to products that are made for shrimp. The companies that specialize in shrimp have spent a lot of money doing product research on it, and that's what they end up using. If you start looking at the breeders, the Flip Aquatics, the, 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 the Eric Lucas, BiPetShrimp.com, the Garden of Edder, you know, we use the products that, that are supposed to be made for shrimp, not, hey, I'm going to grab some cuttlefish bone because it was only $4.99 and stuff like this. I know it, it, it costs a little bit more money. It's $12.99, but use the product. It, it's a great product. Um, um, next one is, is, is choya wood. I call it Chola Wood because I'm from Minnesota and everything else. Yeah, Minnesota. Um, this is a great product out there. What happens is this is actually a cactus. It's harvested in New Mexico, and it's harvested in Arizona. My harvester is Don Cholo. He's 82 years old, drinks his Jack Daniels, cuts wood for me all the time. Um, so what happens, you just throw us in your tank. It's going to float about two days, and it's going to waterlog and sink down. 
what's going to happen is the bacteria that you put in your tank to cycle your tank is going to start eating at the sugars inside this wood. And it's going to produce this white moldy stuff. It's called biofilm. Anytime you put a piece of wood in there and you have bacteria, you're going to get this white foam. It's biofilm. It's 100% natural. Please don't freak out. It's a great product out there, and it's cheap too. So then we have that. So then we go to, I like using almond leaf. Any type of leaf litter. Now, I've had people go over and say, hey, I need to lower my, my, my pH, so I'm going to add an almond leaf. An almond leaf is not going to lower your pH. It's going to, like, minutely bring it down, but for you to lower the pH for what you want, let's say you, you're at an 8.4, you need to bring it down to 7.6. Don't do it this way. Do it with RO water. Cut the water down, and that's going to take the, the cage out of the tank to drop it down. You would literally have to have a whole tank full of these, and your water would look like tea if you want to go over and lower it that way. Best way to do it is cut it with RO water. Uh, what's good about almond leaves is almond leaves, the bacteria is going to break this down. So the shrimp not, not necessarily – oh, it's a little hard. It's cute. Uh, the shrimp not necessarily eat this. What happens is the bacteria breaks this down. And then what happens is shrimp do scavenge on that. Um, so how I do it is, depends on the size of the tank and how many shrimp you have in there, um, I have a tendency not to overfeed my shrimp. If you overfeed your shrimp, what could happen is you could pollute the tank with waste. Um, so what I do is I keep a piece of almond leaf in there, and I go over, and that's their scavenger. When it looks like a skeleton, I pull it out. Now, I've seen some YouTube videos that people said they boiled this. Don't boil it. I never boil my wood. I never boil my leaves. What happens is the hot water will break down the fibers in here. It won't last as long as what you're supposed to. If you need to, soak it. Soak it is the best way out there. I've never had a problem. I've been doing this for quite a few years. Um, some people said, oh, I got pests in my tank. I've never had pests from it. Um, leaves and stuff do get fumigated. Um, I've never had an issue with any of that fumigation leaching into my tank and killing off my shrimp. I just haven't done it. Know the source where you get stuff. If you go on Amazon and you see almond leaves for $2 and it says 20, 30 of them, they're probably not the best almond leaves out there. So you should be kind of aware. Um, I like the ones that are a little bit thicker, um, a little bit bigger as well because I can break down to the size that I want and I just throw it in the tank. It's a great product out there. Um, now let's go to filtration. Okay. There's a lot of filtration you can use for the, for the shrimp. Okay. I personally like using the dual sponge filter. There it is right there. Why I like using the dual sponge filter is that, um, if you need to set up another tank, you can take one of the filters off and you can transfer it to the other tank and speed cycle your other tank. Uh, there's two different versions and stuff like this. We have the 2831, which is made up to a five gallon tank. Um, and then you have the 2822s, which is made up to a 30-gallon tank. Um, I use the 2822s in a 10-gallon in a tank and, and, and bigger. This is a great product. Now, the one thing I don't like about it is these little suction cups. These little suction cups, they do fail in time. They just kind of like start letting go. Um, I've tried to purchase these sponges or these suction cups. They literally want $6 for four of them. It's cheaper just to buy the whole new kit. Now, what also happens is over time, there's this plastic tube right here. This will actually slide down. There's four small holes and start slowing down your flow. All you have to do is take it out and, and move it a little bit, and it's going to work just fine. It's a great product out there. All right. Then you have just the single sponges. Single sponges work really good. You can actually tilt them on the side and cause flow in the tank. So a lot of fish stores will use this product because it's easier for them to do water changes by just pulling it out and just doing your water change that way. It's a great product out there. And then you have hang on backs. If you use a hang on back for shrimp, I would definitely use a product. It's called the Fluval Edge. It's a pre-filter sponge. So what it does is it goes over your your uh, intake on your on your filter and it blocks the babies from getting sucked in. The adults usually have a tendency to swim away, but the babies will go over and get sucked up if you don't have a pre-filter sponge. Now on these sponges, if you start noticing them getting concave where they're getting sucked in, just take it off, rinse it in old in old tank water, and then put it back on. You don't have to buy brand new ones. Some people do buy brand new ones. If you want to save some money, that's the way you can save money right there. Um so then let's go to the 
Let's save this over here. That's everything on the Neo Caradina tank. Um, what I do is I do my water changes once every two weeks. Um, I do a 25% water change, and then I feed twice a week. But then I also go over and I have um, my almond leaf in there and, and troyo wood. I do put a little bit of uh, plants in there. You don't have to put plants in there. So let me just go to some questions quick, see if there's any questions in the chat, and then we're going to start talking about the Caradina. So let me scroll up. Let me scroll up. There's Rocco. Let's see. Fish Room Fever. Hello. Yes, please hit the thumbs up. I appreciate it. If you, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Let me go. A Chevy Fish. There's Aquatic Morning Show. I love it. I'm going to actually pin that up there. Boom. There it is. Boom. I haven't got to the question yet. So. Um, there's that one right there. Let's keep on scrolling down. Like and hit. What's this one? I keep waiting to see the three. I like this. I like this comment. I keep waiting to see the three easy flex payments pop up on the screen. Yes. Okay. So there's been other companies that actually do this where they allow people to go over and do payment plans on stuff. Well, technically the, the, the store gets paid for it and they have to do it with other company and stuff like this. Um, I have thought about it on the, on the bigger tanks, but my, this is my sediments. If you come to my store and you're trying to buy five shrimp in there at $25 and you can't pay $25, um, maybe you should hold off a little second, a quick second on this, or you can just talk to me if you work on something. But I like that. That's, that's, that's so funny. <laughs> Act now. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Keep on scrolling down. I do have a salesman voice. Um, yeah, I've done a lot of sales in my life with other ones. I used to sell auto parts to car dealerships uh, nationwide. Um, I had fun doing it. It got really stressful. It got so stressful that I started having blurred vision on my phone calls because it was just a high-intensity one. Um, I do like helping people out. All right, my, my, shrimps, what's this? my shrimps are still living but not thriving. All right, so if you have questions, Fish Dreams, if your shrimp are living but just not thriving – then the first thing we'd have to know is like your water parameters and what you're doing. I would have to basically know your routine um, to see what I can do to help you out on that one. Um, sometimes it's a matter of just tweaking one or two small things. Okay. Hey, Jess. Your shrimp are taking over your 40 breeder. I don't see a problem with that. Let's see, lurkers. Let me see, Miss Lori. Let's keep on going down, scrolling down. Chevy, Chevy Fish members. Yep, and here's for the coming to the member of my show. Show that off a little bit more. Thank you, Monster Fish God. Love my moderators. Thank you. Just kind of scrolling down, trying to get it up. Rico Stan, hello, hello. He's been mes you've been mesmerized and didn't ask any questions. So I just had to make sure that there's all the questions were kind of uh, uh, got. Um, if there is a question that I haven't got, please just retype it back in there. I, you know, I can only, I scroll up so far and I just don't want to spend so much time on that on there. Um, so if there's any other questions, especially Lady Diane, if you have any questions, please let me know. I appreciate everything that everybody is doing. Uh, now let's talk about the Caradina tanks. My personal favorite. Um, now, on the Neo Caradinas, like if you took a bunch of colors and you mixed them together, they're going to come out to the wild brown. I personally like the wild shrimp. Some people don't like the wild brown. I do. On the Caradina ones, if you start mixing the different genetics, what happens is it doesn't go back to the wild brown. What will happen is it will actually start transferring the patterns over. Now, the only difference is on the crystals. If you took a crystal red or a crystal black and you mixed it with a Taiwan B, you're going to get a Michelin. So what's going to happen is the red that's on the crystal red that you normally would get would turn more of like a brown color because it's a subspecies that's different. All right. I had a question. So Yanni J had a question of the best heaters. So I see that right there. So I didn't see the question above, so I'll just cover this right now. Our heaters. Now, at 76 degrees and above, evaporation starts happening in your tank. It also goes over and... Uh, can start forming certain types of bacteria. There is a disease called muscular necrosis. It's where the bacteria forms underneath the shell of a shrimp. And then what happens is the insides turn like a milky white. It's really prevalent on ghost shrimp and a mono shrimp. Um, if you really want to see it, go to the 
chain stores and look at their shrimp because you're going to see it in there. So what will happen is the bacteria will start growing. The shrimp will die from it. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. So what's going to happen is when they molt and die, because they will, another shrimp eats the molt and eats the or eats on the shrimp, and they start catching it. It can actually wipe down your whole entire tank. There's easy fixes for this. So what you would do is if you notice, start notices in your tank um, and you have a heater in there, first of all, drop down the heater down to below 70, I'd say about 72. Um, a lot of times people say, I'm going to set my heater at 74. Heaters are specifically made to do plus or minus 2 degrees. So if you have it at 74, and technically it could be at 76. I personally don't put any heaters in my tanks. Room temperature is fine. In the wild, shrimp are harvested between 55 and 62 degrees. So you don't need to have a heater in the tank. If you do need a heater in your tank because you have it down in your basement, set it at 72. Now, if you, by per chance had muscular necrosis or you think you had muscular necrosis in your shrimp because you're starting to have random deaths and you can't explain it, I'd say treat for muscular necrosis, okay? What you end up doing is you end up shutting off your filter, okay? Unplug your filter, shut off the air for your filter. Go get some peroxide, just straight up over-the-counter peroxide. It's eight milliliters for a 10-gallon tank. Squirt that in your tank, let it sit there for a half hour. Now, peroxide is H2O2. In a matter of 30 minutes, it, it turns to H2O. So in 30 minutes, it's going to turn just to water. What that does, it's going to start eating away at the, the, the bad bacteria in your tank, and that's why we shut off the filters because we want to keep all the healthy bacteria alive and well. So after a half hour, plug back in your, your filter, turn back on your hang on back, and guess what? It's going to be all fine. Um, I have a tendency to do that twice in one week to make sure that the muscular necrosis is all dead. And then I introduce fish slowly back in, or shrimp back in the tank. All right. So I see a question of what is the red on the saddle of blue shrimp? I have not seen red on the saddle of my blue shrimp at all. It's usually like an off blue on there. Uh, but you also got to remember that if you have a lower grade blue shrimp, it could be some more of their intestines that are in there as well. Um, also, eggs on shrimp. Everybody's like, well, the eggs need to be yellow. Eggs need to be yellow. No, they don't. Eggs turn by the color of what they're eating too. Now, there's some back in the day, I'd probably say like four years ago, there was a, a so-called breeder and seller i don't want to throw out anybody's names because they're not in the, they're not in our area anymore um she was selling some high-end shrimp and the shrimp ended up having green fungus on it and she said it was eggs. she swore up and down it was eggs it's eggs it's eggs it's eggs but it was actually green fungus um the difference between the green fungus that you see and eggs is eggs are round fungus is more like a jagged one looks like a little like stalactite or stalagmite coming off the shrimp um, and it grows underneath it. What it's actually jammed up inside of, of the shrimp. Now, everybody says add tannins, black out the tank, peroxide the tank, uh, dog dewormer. It doesn't work, guys. It doesn't. Trust me. We've all tried it. There's a product called Tima Care, which I'm going to get on my uh, on my line. It's from Germany. Um, it's a preventive uh, treatment for it. You feed it like it's a small piece, drop a small pea sized ball once a week in your tank, and it's a preventive measure for it. Now, we've actually tested it on shrimp that actually had the, the elvasis, uh green fungus. Um, and it took about a month for it to not be there anymore. It'll start turning like a lightish brown color, and then it just kind of dissipates out. Um, so how green fungus first starts, it's not green at first. It's like a lighter yellow. It might look like eggs, but it's actually green fungus on there. Um, and I'll have that on there once I get the product in hand. Um, I will go over and I'll post about it. Um, it's just it's a hard product to get, especially from Germany, um, with the uh, with the uh, the shipping cost on. Them. Let's go back here. All right, I think that's all cut up. Perfect. Yep, it's all cut up. All right, let's go back. Let's go to Caradinas now. Now on Caradinas, you're gonna have to 100% have RODI water. I don't care what anybody says. They're like, oh my tap water, my freaking bees are doing well. No, you need RODI water. Okay, tap water does have KH in the water, so KH is made to keep your water stable. Now the city does not want your water going from six to seven to eight to everything else. So they put KH in there to keep it stable. Okay, so you're gonna need RODI water. So RODI water is reverse osmosis deionized water. 
Distilled water does have some minerals in there. Reverse osmosis water does have minerals in there too. So you need RODI. Now I have used the local grocery stores water. It's like a giant dispenser and that's worked out fine. I bring my, I, I personally bring my TDS meter when I go, when, if I want to get more water and stuff, I just test it right there. I don't have a problem. If they look at me funny, whatever. I'm a, I'm a fish nerd anyways. Um, now by doing that, you need to remineralize your tank. So there's different products out there. You have the Shrimp King version, which is the bee salt, which is right there. The number that you're looking for, you're actually looking for um, a TDS meter of 115 to 130. Describing all the product right here, um, which is a GH of four to five with no KH in the water at all. Um, so this is good for bigger tanks. This is what I use for my show tank. Because um, I have zero stone in there, and the zero stone releases my cage for the tank. Uh, but this one is a great product. And then you have the SO Aquas version, which is called More, which is a GH. Like I said, it used to be called uh, uh, Blue Wizard. Now it's they're using the version called More. And then I use this in my smaller tanks. So it is a Caridina GH supplement. Put it up right here. Again, put your finger over the top of it, shake it up really well, and then dose accordingly, and then check with your GH test kit or and your uh, or and or your your TDS meter. Um, now, I know a lot of people love using. The, hey, shut the green screen off. Um, the GHKH test kit right here. It's a color changing one. So if you are colorblind, do not buy this kit because it is a color changing one. Um, so for the KH test kit, it goes from blue to yellow, I do believe. And then for the GH, it goes from orange to green. So I tell people when you first put a drop in there to test your KH, um, for a Caridina tank, it won't even go over and turn blue. It'll go straight to yellow. And everybody's like, well, that's one. I'm like, no, technically that's zero because it never did the color changing at all. So now we revamp to say KH is zero to one to adjust for that one drop. Um, now what happens on your GH, it should go from orangish yellow to a green now as soon as you put the drop in there and you shake it up and it doesn't change color put another drop as soon as it does remotely changes the color quick and you see it with your eye stop because that's what the number is some people are like no i need a, a like a super dark green and they're like my k my gh is seven and i'm like no it's not when did it change at five well that's five then so that's the product right there um so we got that one, and there's other ones out there. It's like Salty Shrimp makes some products out there. I just don't carry the product. I haven't used it, so I don't I don't like really pushing the product I have. Um, I heard that Salty Shrimp, here it is right here. Someone brought it up. Your thoughts on Salty Shrimp GH and GH Cage? Salty Shrimp is a good product out there. Please don't get me wrong. I just don't use it. There's a lot of products out there that I haven't used. So my thoughts are if I don't use the product, I'm not going to sell the product here in my store. Um it is out there. Um, it is a great product out there. I know a lot of people use it. Um, so please just do some research on it. Um, another thing about research is Google is full of information out there. Some good, some bad. The problem you have with Google is like anybody can do uh, a Wikipedia. Um, you get the person that has one shrimp tank, has been doing it for 30 days, and they think they're an expert, and they're like, this is what you need to do. If you don't do it, I'm going to on you. Um, Go by what your local experts do. Find a local expert around you and copy what they do because they know what the water is like. This is why Rob from Flip Aquatics, Eric Lucas from BuyPetShrimp.com, Grant from Gutter of Edder, and myself, we're all friends. You'll, you'll see us at the show all hang out. We're not enemies because we have you know different shrimp businesses. This is, we're all in different aspects of the country, and we all kind of agree upon the same thing. Now, Grant may keep his Neo Caridinas at a lower TDS down in Florida, but it's a whole entire different story up here in Minnesota. So, and that's where we all kind of like combine and like, look, this is like what we end up doing. Um, if you buy shrimp, kind of match the parameters with the breeder that already has them on there. It just only works great. Don't don't stress out the shrimp enough. Um, so let me get this on here. Boom. I just noticed one of my CO2 tanks ran out. Got to roll and get this thing filled. I'll catch you all later. Sounds good. I thought it was a CO2 question, but. <laughs> it wasn't so all right have a good one thanks for watching um all right now let's go to the soils that can go in the caridina tank now on the soils you cannot use an inert uh soil 
um, like uh, eco-completes and sand. It's just, it doesn't buffer. You need to have an active soil. Uh, active soil, what active soil does is it actually lowers your pH in the tank. So how that ends up happening is because you have meet the bay. You have no cage in the or no cage in the tank, which allows the water to buffer down. Now there's a lot of products out there. I like using this, and there's been a lot of videos done on it. It's the Shrimp King Active Soil. They also have Scaper Soil. It's the same product out there. Uh, the millimeter is roughly about three millimeters for the size of it. Um, you put it in the soil. It does break down over time. Um, it does not release ammonia in the tank. Um, I like using it. It's it is nutrient rich to a point. You know, can you put this in your tank and that's all you put in your tank for, for plants? No, you need to add other stuff. But the active soil allows it to go over and get buffered down. Now, another thing I want to add or talk about is the quality of product because there's a lot of buffering substrate out there. Fluvo makes a product. There's a lot of out there. If a soil is being made overseas... What a lot of the higher end soil do is they heat the soil up to 400 degrees and they seal the bag. So when you look in the bag, you have little moisture droplets in there, and that's because it was heated up in there. So a lot of the, the companies that specialize in products for shrimp do spend the money out there for it. There is that. There is, let's see here. Here's the protobio soil. So this stuff is one millimeter for size right here. So if you're looking for more of a carpeting a plant, I would suggest this. This works great for using like Monte Carlo and stuff. Um, it does break down a little bit faster. Um, it doesn't release that much ammonia in the tank. If it does, uh, I, I've had good success rates on the protobio with baby survival out there. Okay. Then the other product I have in my store is Brightwell products. So I carry their brown active soil because some people want the brown soil versus the black soil. So I do have the brown soil. It's kind of showed up this camera right here. It's a nice brown. It's about one to two millimeters on here. Um, I have the two pound, the five pound. I think it's a big 25 pound bag. Um, there's other products. You have Amazonia. So Amazonia out there releases ammonia for the next six months in your tank. It's great for a planted tank, not necessarily for shrimp and everything. You're going to have to wait some time before you go over and put um, um, shrimpies in there. Um, you have uh, the Fluvo makes a product out there that you see at the local chain stores and stuff. It does buffer your stuff down, but it does break down really fast, turns more like a powder. Um, there's a product that I product tested out there. It's called Platinum Soil. Um, it's supposed to kind of represent almost like what um, Amazonia does. Now, what it does is instead of releasing ammonia, it releases ammonium in your tank. So you're going to get the, the reading of ammonia in the tank, but it's actually ammonium. Um, that's what I have in my 10-gallon tanks on the bottom. The problem I have is when I use that one, I started noticing the soil after about two months started going like a grayish color versus the brown. Um, I asked the vendor about that. He couldn't give me no answer on it. So it's like I'm not going to carry the product in there. Um, I did originally put my my boas in i transferred my boas from my 2.5 gallon tank the colony got started to get bigger and i put them down in the 10 gallon tank down there and i started having some random death so of course i yanked them out and my tigers are doing good in there but that's that's about it so that's my my personal opinion on that one um let me see this right here hey joe i have a three gallon upgrading to a 10 ga 10 gallon with the canister can i use a sponge filter from the old tank for for a couple of weeks for instance like yes you can um, it's, in theory, shouldn't even take a couple weeks. It could literally happen within seven days. Um, a sponge does carry tons of healthy bacteria in there. Um, and then you can also go over, and if you have two sponges, you can actually take that one sponge when you put the soil in there and kind of squish it out on top of your soil. It's going to work out great for you. Um, all right, so that was the soil. So let's go over the rocks then again for you. So in the Caradina tanks, you are not going to use zero stone. Not. It has cage in, the, in the, here. You're going to start having fluctuations. Your shrimp are going to die. Use Oco Stone. It works great. Um, or Slate. Or Lava Rock. Um, put the Almond Leaf in there. Put the Choya Wood in there. Put some Moss in there. They love it. Now, the other products I want to talk to you about is... I use Bacter AE. Every... Gotta shut off the green screen. Gotta shut it off. Um, 
Bacter E. Whenever I do a water change, I put a little dose of Bacter AE. If you use this on a consistent basis, this will raise your TDS in the tank. It's a great product out there. I don't necessarily use it for the Bacter, the bacteria in there. When I dose it, if you have shrimp in the tank and you dose it, the shrimp are going to end up eating it versus producing the biofilm that you, you occasionally want. Um, I want to talk about a product called, it's, it's not going to show up well here, Listen, you can't see it. It's like a top secret item right here. It's actually called Z1. It's made by SL Aqua. It's a great product out there. Instead of using dog dewormer to get rid of hydra and planaria, it's a great product. Z1, it's all natural. Now, a lot of times people will say, hey, I read the instructions and I followed it. Again, I don't follow the instructions because this was made over in Taiwan. Our water is different. How I dose this is I, it's one level scoop for a 10-gallon tank. You dose it. You wait 48 hours. If you still see hydroplanary in the tank, you dose again, wait 48 hours, and do a 25 to 30% water change. I always dose it twice just in case there's stuff that you don't see. But instructions here will say dose it, leave it in for a week, and then do a water change. I will say that I've had some people say that they've had some pest snails, and the snails have died from this. Now, I've never had this happen, but that's what someone says. So I've always done the whole wait 48 hours, dose again, wait 48 hours, and do a healthy water change. Clean up the substrate because all the planaria, all the detritus worms that you have are going to be underneath the substrate. You're going to suck up all the dead bodies and stuff. All right. So I'm trying color guppies. Good morning, good morning to answer everybody's questions. Um, and then when you top off your tank. So... As your week goes by, water is going to evaporate out of the tank. When water evaporates out, the mineral stays in the tank. So that means instead of having a 4 to 5 for a GH on your caradinas, you might actually have like a 5 to 6. So your TDS is going to be higher. Don't freak out. Just top it off with RO water. When you top off the water, especially RO DI water, there's no minerals in that it's going to equalize it back out. That's why I have tops on all my tanks because it slowly re reduces the the uh, uh the evaporation out of there so let's see some other questions here if you guys have questions please chime it in there thank you guys for watching again um but otherwise i want to keep on talking to you guys uh the color mesmerized over here Ooh. oh i oh, at color um so i do want to talk to you about the the, the uh usa shrimp contest now i'm the director of the international shrimp contest um i was brought up like uh what well, last year we had the, during COVID, we couldn't have a shrimp contest. Now people asked about this year about having an international shrimp contest. Unfortunately, if countries are not open for travel, I cannot have an international shrimp contest. If I decided to do one this year with Taiwan being shut down and Germany shut down, it wouldn't be an international shrimp contest. It would be a USA shrimp contest in the international format. Um, so as long as countries are the main countries like Taiwan and Germany are shut down, I cannot have an international shrimp contest. We sat down with Denerlay, uh, Shrimp King, uh, and JBJ, and we discussed this. We have to have an open travel for the breeders to come over. Um, I know a lot of people are like, well, just have it anyways in the USA, but it's not going to be a fair thing. I run a fair contest. It's all fair. Um, if there is a specific country that normally enters in and it can't come over here and – I just can't have the contest. Now, they can ship the shrimp over here, uh, but a lot of the breeders like coming over here, and I want to give them the option to come over here. So we have the uh, the American Shrimp Contest, which is a USA-only uh, bread uh, contest. So it's for the home breeders out there uh, that are breeding shrimp in the USA. It's a great format for them to reach out, send some shrimp in there, see where they rate for all the other shrimp out there. Uh, what's cool about it is we started making some of the bigger breeders, uh, the My Pet Shrimps, the Gardner Vetter judges, so they can't actually enter in the contest. So it's a great opportunity for you to showcase your shrimp, to get our feedback by the grading of it, of, of what you should do for your shrimp. Now, I know a lot of people are going to go out and reach out with what the judges look for. Um, I don't like doing that. There's no other contest out there that actually shows what the judges look for. I know. Why not just share it? Uh, the problem we have with doing that, which I'm sure other judges will show what it is, is if you specifically went by that category of what the judges look for, and you believe that you didn't score as high as what you think you should by going by that format, 
then you start messaging us about why we did this and why we did this and why we did this. When there's other formats that you have to look at, you know, you got the coloring on the legs, you got the sizes, you have all the patterns, you have all this other stuff that we look for and we base it off that too. So that's why I don't like showing the, the, the judges score sheets um, and I never will show it. Um, it's just kind of what we've all done. Some people will show it out there. Um, I tell people if, if you want, you can reach out and you can ask me what my, my opinions are of what shrimp you should do and, and I'll help you with that. Um, when they're when the ship are when the shrimp are shipped to the show, the convention center, it's attention to flip aquatics. Um, I tell people if you're in Minnesota, you can bring them to me, I can just fly them out there. I'm a judge. I can't put them in the tank. So I don't know what's going inside the tank. All I do is I show up there Saturday morning with Eric and Grant, and we judge each tank individually. We look at that specific tank. Um, five shrimp are in there, so we choose the best three. So we'll grab a male and then usually two females because you should have a, a male in there so that you're, you're constantly breeding. Um, and we, cho we go from that. Now, that's why I tell people you should always go over and ship five or six shrimp don't ship three because there's been times when people ship three and one died and they get disqualified because they don't have enough shrimp in the tank. Don't ship 20 of them because it's the rule state, I think it's five, five or six, the best five in the tank. We choose the best three. Um, now what's nice about this is everybody's like, well, I don't get first, you know, I don't get money for this. And you know, it's like, it's, it's not about money. This is about showing, showcasing your shrimp. It's about building the hobby up. Um, it's not, it's really nice when you win a category. Um, Let's look at back like at 2017. I entered the I entered the the, the international shrimp contest. My sole purpose is to beat one person because they were online bragging about how they're going to beat everybody back and forth. I wanted just to beat that one person. Um, I ended up winning my category, category one, which had the most entries in there. Um, for a newcomer in there, that's a that's a a great thing, um, and that's what exploded my passion for this. I got that. I'm like, oh wow. I can do so much better and stuff. And I started going more and more. And one tank led to two, led to seven, led to what I have here. Um, so let's see here. Yes, and there is a discount code if you watch the Aquarium Morning Show. It's T-A-M-S on the website for 10% off. So let's hide that one back right there. Please hit the thumbs up. I also have a subscription. If you're in Minnesota, I have membership uh, uh, programs here. It gets you 10, 15, and 20% off. Depends on the tier you do. If you're in Minnesota, it only makes common sense for you to do that to get the discount at my store. All right. Hey, question for Joe. Is 350 TDS too high for cherry and blue dream shrimp? No, it's not. You can raise shrimp at 350. You can raise shrimp at 400. You can raise it at 450. We have to go over and cut a, a guideline to it. So I say 220, 300 is ideal for it. Yes, at 350, you can raise your shrimp in there. But if I went over and I said, uh, yeah, you can do 350, and someone said, well, can I do 400 then? Oh, yeah, I can do 400. It's just when do you stop on the number? The ideal number is 220 to 300, but 350 is adequate for it. Boom. Timbo, good morning, good morning, morning, Chevy fish, fish right there. Uh, does Joe ever relax? <laughs> no, I don't. Um, I get up in the morning like this. I drink my coffee. Um, even at shows, I'm super energetic. This is how I am. Um, I don't drink. I don't do drugs. Um, I now don't smoke, so there's no fun in me no more besides doing the aquatics. Um, this is a passion of mine. I love doing it. Now, I will say if I have a long night chilling out with my friends and stuff um, at shows, I get kind of tired in the morning until I have my coffee. Uh, but I am pretty intense. I'm really passionate about what I do. Um, I'm kind of like a no-nonsense. I'm going to tell you uh, what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Um, this is how I am. So this is another thing that – so Timbo raised he has 13 cage and an 18 GH. That's kind of high, but if it works for him, because I don't know where he's at, it works for him. Now, they do have the dip strips that you dip in the tank and you quick read. I don't like using those because they're not as accurate and they give a different reading. Now, when someone says a GH for carotene is a four to five, what they're doing is they're using the the liquid GH, the liquid GH cage test kit. So four to five is four drops or five drops. It's not necessarily using the, the strip method because it's not accurate. 
All right, Utah liquid test. Okay, perfect. So Utah, that is super hard water. So what I would do, if it's for your neocaridinas, I mean, in your picture, I do see a big old fish in there that might like it harder like that. For neocaridinas, that is a bit high. Um, I'm guessing that your pH is close to 8, if not a little bit higher in the 8. Um, if you want to drop that down, what I would do is I would cut it down with RO water or distilled. That should drop it down. But if your fish are happy in there, like I see the fish right here. Oh, you, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm actually high, like circling it with my thing. Um, you know, so be it. Um, Utah could have hard water in there too. Um, if you want to know more, you can always shoot me a message and I can start looking into that a little bit more. Um, and that's another thing I do is like, if I don't know the answer, guess what? I'm going to find the answer for you. I've had some people say, you know, hey, Joe, I want you to do water changes for GH or for Caradinas. It took me a couple of weeks, but then I ended up doing it. Um, so if you want to see specific things, just please let me know. Uh, I want to do more interviews too. Um, thank you, Chevy, Chevy Fish, for um, saying I give some grid information. Um, if there's anything on here that I just, I haven't answered, please leave a comment in here. I answer all the comments that are in here, whether or not it's a thumbs up or a thank you or got it, you know, I at least read every single message and I respond back to it. Uh, all right, perfect right here. So Timbo says, the cherry seems to die one by one uh, for what looks like failed molts. So, all right. So on shrimp, you have a good molt and you have a bad molt, which is called a failed molt. Now, when a shrimp molts, it should look like a full shrimp, just the exoskeleton of it. That's a good molt. If all of a sudden you see a shrimp laying on their side and they're kind of like twitching their feet, usually that's a tendency the water is too soft. It's trying to, it's having problems trying to molt their skin. They're using too much energy and they're more likely going to die. Then there's one called the ring of death. So what happens is right in back of the neck, they'll form a white line. And that's because the water is too hard. What will happen is the shrimp will 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 bend and flex its body. And what it does is it tries to flick its its exoskeleton off. What happens is it tries to flick it, but if it doesn't flick it because the water is too hard, it causes the ring of death and it actually breaks it breaks their back. Now, have shrimp survived from this? Yes, they have survived from it. Is it one of those ones where if I see it, you should be more worried about seeing it and fixing your water. So a lot of times what people will do on their shrimp tanks is they'll have an issue and what they want to do is they'll want to add chemicals in there to fix their issue versus finding out what's wrong with their tank and fixing the issue. My tanks here, I don't put mineral balls in them. I don't put all that snake oil, what everybody else ends up doing and stuff. Does it work for them? It can work for them. I do the simple basics of, of what shrimp need. They need food. They need proper water. And they need good water changes. That's what shrimp need. Do shrimp need to have 14 mineral balls, seven caves, and everything else? No, they don't need that. As long as the shrimp are healthy and thriving and get off the ground and keep on breeding, that's all that matters. If shrimp all of a sudden in your tank stop breeding, it's usually that they're not comfortable or they think the, the, the tank has enough shrimp on it as it is. Um, if you want to add more shrimp, like these 2.5s up top, I've had over 300 tanks there, or 300 shrimp there. Uh, what I do is I add more moss to it. It, it tricks and makes them think the tank, uh, the tank is uh, bigger. Um, let me read this one. I haven't even read this. Joe, I think I got really lucky by buying the private breeders of gold line yellows and dark cherries. I'm overrun with shrimp and no one wants the yellows when I advertise. Luckily, I love them. All right. So private breeders, gold, gold line yellows. So gold line would be the 24 karat gold. So the 24 karat golds were originally imported from Joe's Aqua, I do believe. Um, they were good shrimp, super bright and stuff. Um, I have golden backs as well, too. So certain areas can go over and start getting overwhelmed with certain types of shrimp. Um, and then you have to start finding other ones. Um, case in point, I, you know, I gave a talk uh, a couple years ago, a few years ago down in Iowa, and I brought down a bunch of orange rillies. Then the area of Iowa got overwhelmed with orange rillies. Kind of what happens when someone has this, they give some shrimp over here, they sell, people start breeding it. It's all about switching up your lines. Um, if you're trying to breed for, for, for profit, you know, contact a local fish store, see what they do. A lot of times they'll tell you exactly what they want. Me personally, I tell people, if you carry my line, if you bought sh shrimp for me and you, you talked ahead of me saying, Hey, Joe, if I buy these shrimp, will you, will you buy them back? I'll lock you in at that, but I'm going to tell you what I pay. 
uh, to buy them back. And it, a lot of times, like on Blue Dreams and Cherries and stuff, it goes by the quality. Um, so just reach out to your local breeder if you're trying to get rid of stuff. Um, let's see here. I just realized it's just females also. I have no idea what is happening. All right. Another problem that might be um, – is start looking at the shrimp in your tank. If you have more males in your tank than females, what could happen is when you add water to a tank, it causes the female or causes the shrimp to molt. When the shrimp molt, especially a female, it releases pheromones in the tank. What happens is you'll start seeing the males start swimming all around the tank trying to find the female. Now, if you have more males in the tank than females, what tends to happen is when they find the female, all the males will and they'll end up killing the female. So it's ideal to have more females than males in the tank. Now, if you need specific types, it's all about reaching out to the people that purchase the stuff and say, look, I have too many males in my tank. Can you send me some females? A lot of times, a lot of people will be, sure, I can do that. Um, the problem you have is when people start wanting more males versus females. I have tons of females here. I don't have that many males there. Um, so I have a tendency, like when I ship out, um, if you order 10 shrimp, um, I usually give you a couple males and the rest all females. It's a good it's a good um, numbers. We have eight females, two males, um, or five. And I, 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 whenever you buy five for me, I always put an extra one in there for any DOA. So usually that one right there is going to be like a smaller juvenile male. Um, it works. It works great. Um, uh, let's see, the, yep, not a problem, Lady Diane. Glad to answer your questions for you. Um, another thing that it's funny is I've talked to like other breeders out there for shrimp. Now, if you purchase shrimp from online vendors, please know the source where you're getting them from. Do I buy from eBay and Amazon? No, I do not because it's not an up close and personal. If you cannot sit there and, and, and talk to them and know about these shrimp, I just don't do it. Um, the problem I end up, I talk to with some of the breeders is like a lot of us will include a free shrimp for any DOA, like buy five, get one or buy 10, get one or buy, you know, but what will happen is, We'll ship the shrimp to them. Let's say they bought 10, and I put two for DOA in there. I'll get an email saying, hey, Joe, two shrimp died. I'm like, hey, can I see a picture? That's most of us ask us ask is please take a picture while they're in the bank so we know that they died. We're not trying to call you liars, but you got to understand our concept is we have a lot of people trying to get free stuff. Um, and they'll show me a picture, and I'll see, like, two shrimp dead. And I'll be like, well, how many do you have alive? Ten. Okay, it's a problem. Well, I got two dead shrimp, and I'm like, I know, but you paid for 10 and you got 10. The two shrimp in there were extras. Well, I want those two shrimp. Well, it doesn't work. The two were there just in case something died in the bag from dropping the box or doing something like that. That's where the two extra came from. Um, so that's where it's like we got to kind of watch out for that. All right, let's see some more messages. All right, let's see what Emily says. I put a little Shrimp King General general in the pumpkin tank and they ignore it general does it mean that they're finding uh, enough biofilm in the tank so stop adding additional food i only have a seven and a 20 gallon tank all right so i i'm, I'm thinking that you're thinking like the shrimp can complete and everything else so usually shrimp are scavengers so what they'll do is they'll constantly scavenge in there so if you put a food in there and they're not eating it obviously they're full in so i have a tendency to feed shrimp twice in one week and i put the um the almond leaf in there. If there's babies, I you do a, a pinch for them uh, every couple days just so the babies can go over and get it. Babies don't have a tendency to actually go after the pellets. They stay on the sides of the glass and on the filter. So powder works great. It spreads across the top. Um, if you do drop a pellet in there, I have a tendency to do um, one pellet for 15 shrimp. Um, and then what I do is I come back. If the pellet's still sitting there after a few hours, I take it out so it doesn't start molding in there. Um, that's the biggest thing is what uh, happens is people leave the food in there. It starts molding. Um, got them from a, a local fisher to try uh, shrimp for the first time. Thanks to the info, Joe. Not a problem. Yes. So a lot of a lot of stores buy from importers, and that the twenty four carat was actually was an import on there. Um, let's see here. I would just say you get that from restaurant uh, biz. You get that in the restaurant biz too. Folks just want free stuff before they walk out the door. It, it happens. I'm not saying everybody is like that. I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying everybody's like that. But we do get some people like that that want to get the free product out there. And they have to understand that we're a business too and that, you know, like all my stuff in my stores, I pay out of my pocket for it um, ahead of time and I'm trying to be successful. Uh, and that's the biggest thing is, you know, supporting your local fish store. I'm a local fish store. Um, 
I know like Grant and, 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 and Eric Art Fish Tours and, and Flip is thinking about it. You know, support your local breeders. Um, that's the biggest thing. Um, I know a lot of times people say, well, there's a lot of breeders out there selling. So when I started, there's only like four or five out there. And then what would happen is every six months, you all of a sudden you'd have 20 or 30 shrimp breeders out there and sellers. Um, and then what would happen is a few months down the road, they found out that it's harder than what it seems, and then they would die off. And then it was always stuck back to the four of us out there. Um, there's other breeders out there. I'm not bad mouthing any of the breeders. Just know the product that you end up getting. Um, also know that um, – you know, if you get products from us, we stand behind our products. And then, but if you all of a sudden purchase other shrimp from, let's say, Amazon or eBay and introduce them to the tank, more likely they are imports. Um, and diseases do happen then too. And then, if that disease affects that shrimp, the disease is going to affect our shrimp as well. Um, so, no babies yet, Emily. Be patient. Um, usually in the wintertime, too. Um, um, usually in the wintertime, what will happen is. Uh, shrimp will stop breeding. What happens is the barometer changed. So when the barometer changed, they just stop breeding. So wintertime, it, we never, ever get shrimp. Um, there's ways and flukes and tips about it. Like if you know the weather, uh, like here in Minnesota, we get a lot of below zero, but all of a sudden we might have a day that goes third degrees up. You could actually look in your tank to see if there's any females that are, are um, saddled. And then the day of the warm-up, the barometer rises, do a water change there, which tricks them. Um to start breeding again too. Um, it's, it takes a lot of time consumption, but it, it helps here and there. Um, so again, I want to thank everybody out there that was watching. Um, if you have any more comments, please leave the comments down below. I will check them out. I want to thank my moderators. You guys are awesome. I want to thank the Aquarium Morning Show. Uh, they're on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. They will also be down in Aquashella Saturday and Sunday on the Aquashella YouTube page uh, doing the morning show from 9 to 10. I will also be on there with Rocco and Jess. Um, hey, Tyler. Look at this. Tyler's here from last week. What is so funny is we talked about um, using meric acid on Ciro Stone, and he went home and he made a concoction. He actually cooked some Ciro Stone to get a lot of the GH and KH out. Now, the reason why he did that is on a Ciro Stone, all this white is, is calcium. All right? So in theory, yeah, you can put muric acid in there, and it'll take off the surface. I mean, it's not going to get all the way through, but what it's the purpose behind it is instead of releasing a lot of GH and KH at one time, you're breaking down a lot of it to make it so it doesn't release as much. That's what Tyler's going. I like I love the video we were talking about that he ended up doing it. Um, you got yeah, he's like he's like, dude, I got my sizzle on. It was it was a cool video and everything else. Um, you should actually hey Tyler, go on your page and share share it on my page so people can actually watch it. So if you go into the Joe Shrimp Shack, Tyler will have it up there. All his products are up on my website as well. All the fertilizers we did talk about his fertilizers. Um, he got a sizzle on. So let's see his last message. So glad to hear that. I can use a uh, use a baby reduction. Thank you so much. So glad I subscribed. Thank you very much. Again, guys, if you guys ever want to go over and be part of the, the membership program, I'm going to be starting to make more uh, membership-only videos out there. Um, I do believe it's $2.99 a month is the first tier, which is 10% off, and then it's $5.99 for 15% off, and it's $19.99, which gets you 20% off. If you're setting up a shrimp tank, obviously – do the 1999 because that's going to go over and get you the more bang for the buck. Um, it also supports me a lot on the videos. Uh, please keep in mind, YouTube does take 30%. Um, I'm just trying to do this to get more people out there and concentrate more on my YouTube. So thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, watch my other videos. Um, peace, everybody, and I will check you out next week. Keep on watching my shorts. Thanks, guys.